water. It's the lifeblood of planet Earth, our single most valuable asset. It's so important that these days, water restrictions are not just a possibility sometimes whispered about, but a fact of life we all must learn to live with. Everyone is being asked to do their part to save life's most precious resource, and almost no other industry is more squarely in the crosshairs of water authorities than the nursery and landscape industry. Hi, I'm Todd Late, plant breeder and founder of Osbury Turf and Ornamental Plant Breeding in Australia. For decades, us Aussies have lived with the reality of water shortages and water restrictions. Lack of water has helped shape our whole breeding program. The other major factors have been low maintenance, functionality and plant reliability. It is these aspects that drive myself and other professional breeders that I work with to develop tough landscape green life. By far our most successful program to date is a collection of Australian grass-like plants we call the Osbreed Range, which is known as the Tuffy Collection in the US. These plants have become very popular in Australia because they give designers and homeowners the look and feel of an ornamental grass, only with the huge benefit of being much more drought and frost tolerant compared to other true ornamental grasses. But best of all, they only need trimming every three to six years. Evergreen plants are loved in the landscape. Each year, millions of these toughy plants are specified on projects around Australia, in the USA and around the world. Over the next few minutes, I want to share a TV interview I've done and share some of the best plants. One of Australia's most successful plant breeders is Todd Late. He's got a whole basket full of ornamental Australian plants to his credit, as well as some turf grass varieties. I'd have to say Lamandra tanika has to be my favourite. It's just so soft and beautiful and so tough, surviving on very, very little water. Casa Blue's a real show piece. It has beautiful blue foliage which sets off any garden and it has the most magnificent blue flowers. Taz Red's one of those plants that works in the colder environments, works very well in Queensland, even in the shade. It's just a really good foliage plant that, that looks at home in any garden. Now, Little Rev looks one of my personal favourites. Absolutely, it really looks nice in amongst a garden or as a border plant. Well, most of our breeding is done through natural seedling selection. We actually often grow thousands and thousands of a variety of plant just to get one new type. So obviously the essence is in the selection process. That's correct. To get a beautiful plant, you need to do lots and lots of plants to get just one good one. In spring 2012, Tanika had its 10th birthday as the best landscape plant in Australia. Its popularity keeps rising, whether it's for a home garden or a large commercial development. So why is it so popular? Is it its clean, fine, dark green foliage and its bright golden flowers that make it a vast improvement over common lamandra? Is it its evergreen foliage in cold frost and its legendary drought tolerance? No other lamandra has ever come close and the ones that also have fine foliage simply never stay as clean. If you want green and not straw brown in cold, heat and drought, then Tanika is the best and most reliable choice. Lamandra longifolia, Catrinus deluxe, is one of the most drought tough plants in the world. Not only has it got a finer leaf than most other Lamandra longifolia, but it also has more flowers. Look at the masses of yellow flowers on these plants. Catrinus deluxe tolerates most soil types and is more frost tolerant than most Lamandra. In more humid regions, it is best to avoid using this plant in periodically saturated soils or depressed areas. In non-humid areas, this is not a concern. Catrinus Deluxe handles full sun and moderate to slightly heavy shade. It is widely used as a roadside plant in Australia, New Zealand and the USA. Taz Red is one tough, adaptable and reliable Australian native. It's the best performing, biggest selling Dianella Tasmanica in Australia. It has really beautiful flowers and great colour contrast with changing foliage colours throughout the year. It is best suited to non-humid regions, but does well in Sydney if planted in the shade. Well, Casa Blue has masses of flowers, more than any other Dianella. Casa Blue's form is more of a clumping Dianella cerulea rather than spreading. Its stunning blue foliage and highly desirable size and shape make it the ideal plant for commercial landscape and home garden designs, especially for South Australia 
Victoria, Western Australia, the ACT and California in the US, where it works in most soil types and conditions, including windswept coastal areas or hot, dry inland conditions. Little Jess is one of the most widely used plants for mass planting in Australia. That's because these little plants are just so tough. Little Jess flowers really well and looks nice and tidy. On a roadside planting, it might need pruning after five years, but in a domestic situation, it helps to prune it every three years or so. Just cut it back to the ground in spring or autumn. Little Jess is the most reliable and biggest selling Dianella in Australia. Little Jess has excellent humidity tolerance and good cold tolerance. Little Jess is great for all over Australia. It remains evergreen in most regions, except in really cold parts like Canberra, where it may discolour in winter. Dianella cerulea is known as one of the most drought tolerant, hardy flax lilies. Underground rhizomes ensure excellent cold survival. Little Jess has very short, compact canes, and it will not fall over like common Dianella cerulea, which generally have long canes. Little Jess in poor to normal soils won't get much bigger than this. In fact, these have actually been in for about seven years and only pruned a couple of times. In really good soils, it will get higher, but a prune each few years soon fixes that. 